honestly, I had a message. But um, after yesterday, I felt like the angel who told me my message, what my message was, I must have left that angel in their apartment yesterday because the angel told them the same message and they preached it. So we're going to try to find ourselves this morning. So I'm going to build on what they shared yesterday. I'm just going to share a few things and I want to speak from a mother's heart. And that means we'll fight a bit, we'll laugh a bit, there'll be small petting, there'll be small playing, but I want you to go away with the message for today. Yesterday, God told me the reason why we wore white was because he wanted to focus on holiness. He wanted to focus on righteousness. He wanted to focus on sin consciousness. He wanted us to focus on our identity in Christ. And so yesterday, that was what that was about. But today, the reason why we're dressed like this is because we're dressed in work clothes. Because my message today is you are revived to build. Tell your neighbor you are revived to build. And I will start from where Pastor Tammy stopped yesterday. Where she talked about the fact that the most important thing is your usability. It's not your availability. It's your usability. For you to be used by God... You have to be usable, for lack of a better word. For you to be used by God, you have to be usable. So it's not just about, oh God, use me. Are you usable? If placed in God's hands, can he use you for anything? Can he use you for something? Because it's not just to say I'm here. Sometimes people send me messages. Oh, Pastor, how can I serve you? How can I do this? And I'm laughing in my mind because I don't know where to hold you. I don't know whether you are a spoon or a knife or a fork. All kinds of things are coming out of you. So if God must use you, then you must be usable. And what makes you usable is consecration. That's why I say people preached my message yesterday. It's consecration. You must understand that you must be holy and set apart. Fit for the master's use. He says, come out from them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing. And I know that that might not be what you expected to hear this morning. But please listen to me. This is not a message of judgment. But there are some things we must address. Just call a spade a spade. Let's stop decorating sin. Let's stop making it seem as if, oh, it's just a weakness, you know. Let's stop making it seem as if, it's not like, you know, it's not, it's, it's, you don't understand. Times have changed. And she said yesterday, times may have changed, but God has not changed. And God will never change. His standards will still remain the same. And I've heard so many people talk about the grace message. And I'm not here to attack the grace message because we're all products of grace. Because we're saved by grace, not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not better than anyone else. I'm just telling you that there are some things that you are doing. Hmm? Either we have done it and we have stopped and we say it's not good. So we're trying to save you the stress. Or I'm just telling you that it's not even good. I didn't try it, but from where I'm standing, it's not good. If God is going to use you, you must consecrate yourself. We must come to that place where we understand that we can't be like the world. I've said it over and over again, and it has become a slogan if you're a tribe member. Others may. I cannot. There are just some things that I cannot do. For other people, it may be okay. For me, it's not okay. Not because I'm proud, but for the sake of my destiny. For the sake of where I'm going to. I keep telling people the problem with why you are allowing the things you are doing now is because you don't know where you are going. You don't know what God wants to use you for. That's why you're allowing that boy to press your breast anyhow. You are taking nudes, with sending nudes. Sending nudes through internet that does not forget. So by the time you're 50 and your children are 30, and somebody says, ah, this thing just resembles your mama when she young. Now your mama be this. People have made crazy mistakes 
You send nudes because you think you love him and he loves you. But most of those marriages, those relationships don't end in marriage. So you have your nudes with about five guys. Tell your neighbor she's going to tell you the truth. You know, go vex, so we never even start. There are some things you cannot do. Other people may do it, but for the sake of your destiny, for the sake of where you are going, for the sake of your assignment. The unbutton for buttons. Button up. Mm. They cut slits inside their slits. Sew your own down. If Taylor wants to destroy your destiny, you repair it. Go and lay sewing, needle and thread, tack it. And see, no go fine. Now me they wear them. Now me no waiting fine. So I see all kinds of crazy things happening. And let me tell you, Satan is very careful about setting the tone. He knows what he's doing. He has an agenda. So he's setting the tone very clearly for what he wants to achieve. So what makes something fashionable is what we see trending. So even if everybody's naked, you feel like if you go to a wedding and you are not naked, you feel like you are not stylish. But let me tell you, you set trends. That's what it means to be revived. That you understand your calling and you are comfortable and confident in it. You don't care what other people are doing. You know the one who sent you and you know what he sent you to do. One of the things you must be very comfortable in is your identity. Who you are in Christ Jesus. It's okay to be you. You are enough. It's okay. One of the things I struggled with when I first got married, there's a way pastor's wives are. They only say, bless you, bless you. If you annoy them, they're not angry. They wear big hats and they sit down in front. Even if everything is going bad, they will say, it is well. It is well. Somebody will come, insult them, it is well. I'm not that one. And so I struggled with that at the beginning. And I kept saying, I told my husband, I said, I'm not a pastor's wife. I don't know why I come to look for me. I'm not, the, I'm not a pastor's wife. <laughs> Until God asked me who said so. If I called you to use you, I know why I called you. You see, this not being able to sit down. It has what has helped the CC today. Because if I'm moving about, you can't give me an excuse. You can't, now. Nah. If you don't do the work, I will do it. If you do too much, I can go come out you for the do the work. Because I'm answerable to God. See, if you understand that and you live for only Him, things will not disturb you. That's why I understood this, my, I, the way I am like this, is exactly what God you, needs for the assignment He has given me. Another person may not be like me, and they will be successful as pastor's wives. But I will not be successful as the wife to this pastor. So you must understand your identity and your assignment. There are some things I will never do. Not because I'm better than you. I just won't do it because I know where I'm going. Another person still know they enter my eye. That's why I can never be a side chick, a side hen, a side cock. What, what are they? Side fowl. And let me tell you. The reason why you are sleeping with a married man because of money eh? is because you don't understand the damage that has been done to your soul. You don't understand what Satan is doing with you. Satan is using you as the door to destroy something God loves. Most people think about divorce when there's infidelity, especially in this day and time. We're not in the time of our mothers where they will stay there and endure. I'm an infidelity recovery coach, so I know what I'm talking about. When you see the brokenness of some women, strong women losing their minds because one silly girl took 5,000 naira and they bought her plane tickets, took her to a restaurant, maybe bought dinner, 25,000, and she sold her soul to Satan. 
And she's like, what's my business? Me, I don't have business with the woman. I only have business with the man. Are you kidding me? You are living like we don't have somebody we answer to. And then on Sunday, you are in the choir, lifting up what you call holy hands. Let me tell you, we need to stop. If you are going to be revived, if you are really going to have a sustained revival, remember this year, it's not about revival. And let me correct something. Revival is not prayer. Because that seems to be the thing, the lie that people carry these days. You think that when you wake up in the morning and pray for one hour, that you have started a revival. Are you joking? A revival is what that prayer births. Prayer is the channel that God uses to speak to you. Meaning that God has something to say. Meaning God has something he wants. So you wake up and you pray for one hour and then for the rest of the 23 hours of the day, you live like Satan himself. You pray in tongues for two hours, but I'm sorry cannot come out of your mouth when you have wronged somebody. When we say we are Christians, it means we are Christ-like. We have the nature of Christ. Which means that there are things that Christ expects us to do because we are like him. If you're going to live a, live, a, a, a revived life, the first thing is consecration. You must be set apart. You can't live like everyone else. Enough, enough. And I know, and I know probably there are some people that stood up from here now from their boyfriend's bed. But your resolve, and I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is after you leave this place and you go back there. That's where the problem is. Let your last sin, let the decision you make today be the last intentional sin you sinned. Let it be the last. Not that when you get back, you go and just within that, ah, you don't know what happened today, my God. You say, oh, did you go for that conference? Yes, I did. It was powerful. I was powerful. What did you learn there? Ah, it was so good. The ministers, eh? Hey, the worship, eh? Ah. And the next minute, is pressing your breast again. And see, don't go back. As you are here, Make that call that it, my charger in your house, please let me send it. Because the charger is follow come. I don't want to lose that charger. Every other thing can be replaced. <laughs> Pastor, you don't understand. Let me just go and break up with him. I need closure. Don't be closure, not close destiny. You won't go close your destiny. Don't be closure. There are some things you, sometimes you must run for your life. If you are going to sustain revival, there are things you cannot touch. You are in the office and you are downloading movies with office data. Uh, tell them she's going to go there. Yes. You come in the morning and you know you came late. When you clock in, you know you came at 9. You write, you look at the last person that came. That person came at 8.42. You write 8.42 and a half. <laughs> Others may, I cannot. Say, Others may, I cannot. <laughs> because of you, people should start coming early to work. You know why? Because if they plan to write 8.48, when you come, write 9 and draw line. So that their 848 like cannot work again. So they know that if this girl gets there, she will spoil our show. So they will start adjusting. That's what revival is. Revival causes you to set other people on fire. Yeah. And I love, oh, Soul Impact, I've fallen in love with you guys again. I love the drama. I love the fact that what rescued those women were other women standing up and saying enough is enough I'm going after my sister I'm going to find my sister I'm going to save her I'm going to rescue her other women were interceding and when they came out we all looked alike ah, yeah, 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 yeah. that's what I want I don't want to be known as the star I want us to shine together so it's not about me carrying fire it's about setting other people on fire 
They came here and they surrounded them. They didn't come here and gossip about them. Mm. If nobody's telling you, let me tell you. When we're growing up, if greeting we used to greet each other in SU and uh, fellowship, is be remain rapturable. We don't say it again. That constant reminder of the fact that rapture can happen at any time. You know that sin, if anybody comes with sin, you just go far from them. <laughs> it says, the night is far gone. The day of his return will soon be here. So, because of all those things, it says, quit the evil deeds of darkness and put on the armor of right living. Right living is an armor. What does that tell you? It tells you that we're at war. And the only way to go and fight in this war is to wear the armor of right living. Such that even if they want to attack you, they will only attack you for the gospel's sake. They can't attack you for any other thing. So you can't be preaching and say this one. Hmm. Not even we're not going to see for this life. Oh. Nobody this girl will come up for that. That's my neighbor. Nobody this girl will. Are they here? Oh, oh. For a room. Hmm. You know me, I'm going to go there now. Now, no, if he beats me, anything for my Jesus. <laughs> he says, put on the armor of right living. No more lying. No more cheating. No more stealing. No more malice. Because you know some things, and what, maybe why we hammer on this, some of these sexual sins, because they are obvious. But the sin of pride. Nobody can tell you anything. Nobody can correct you. Um, this word she's teaching is not for me, it's for Susan. Mm. I hope Jenny, and you're looking around, I hope Jennifer is in church. Mm. Okay, maybe I'll record what, at what point is this? 13.04 on the video. Okay, I'll send her the clip. And see, it's you I'm talking to. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not is sin. It never said sin is only fornication. There's a sin of pride. The sin of unforgiveness, the sin of unbelief, malice, malice, trying to bring other people down, gossip. I've told you before, use this your gossip for God's use. If not for people that were gossiping, the woman with the issue of blood will not have been healed. I've told you that story now. She won't have been healed. The Bible said she heard about Jesus. How? Because if she was alone, remember, she was unclean. So she was set apart from other people. So it's possibly her neighbors that were just sitting outside the window. So they say, Jesus, they come, who be Jesus? I know what for you, never hear Jesus. When you come there since, you know they this Israel. I say, who be Jesus? Now tell me if you want to tell me, no cost me. <laughs> okay. But you know Lazarus, Sha? Which Lazarus? Oh, this guy, to the door. You don't know Mary and Martha, brother. Mary and Martha, Mary. Okay, that Martha, where every time I walk, I walk, she knows the rest. Exactly. You say, so you know Lazarus. Eh, she be don't die. Which Lazarus don't die? You know, you say Jesus resurrect him. <laughs> it was talk like that. They say, now nah, this Jesus, they pass. I beg me, I go see you, make I know that. She said to herself, I will go. And if I can just touch the hem, that means I don't even have to talk to him. If I can just touch him, I will be healed. So this gossip that you are gossiping, you are wasting it now. How you, how you gossip about yesterday's message? Oh, it was so good though. How about you gossip about J. Clef and the way he worshipped God today? Let go of all those things. Why? Because our master is coming back soon. He says, as we who live in the daylight should, be decent and true in everything you do so that all can approve your behavior. Be decent in everything you do. In other words, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Sometimes the level of wickedness I find in some people, it scares me. How do you sleep at night? Because you are one thing in front of people and another thing behind them. 
You are like that rat that is biting them and blowing them breeze. How do you do these things? Hmm. It says, don't spend your time in wild parties. Please, is that the Bible? Mm. So you see why I say this Bible is sweeter? It says in wild parties, because you know, you know, say, you know they take icy groove. Yesterday, Pastor Timmy said something that was, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> she said being an unbeliever is so stressful. You will go to a nightclub, you will dance, dance, dance. There's no cheer when you are tired. <laughs> you will smoke, no place to rest. But when you come to church, hallelujah, you go dance more, you go sit down small. You will hear the words more, you will sit down. There's refreshing in God's presence. Small time now, they will share refreshments for everybody here. So how can you choose the unbeliever life? Aish. Ah, I don't know. I don't, honestly, people that are not serving God, I fear them. He says, don't spend your time in wild parties and getting drunk or in adultery. Mm, who knew? Being a side chick. And lost or fighting or jealousy. Do you see, it goes from the external to the internal. He says, don't do the one outside, don't do the one inside. Sin is bad. He says, but ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help you live as you should. And don't make plans to enjoy. Don't make plans to enjoy evil. Don't strategize on how to cover it. Last, last, we go repent. Jesus, go forgive us. Let's enjoy it now. We will repent now. After I stand up for me, I will repent. We have already started. He has pulled my blouse. Should we now stop now? It's the same forgiveness. If they forgive me for making out, and they forgive me for actual sex, it's the same forgiveness I will collect. He said, don't make plans to enjoy sin. The scripture minister blessing read this morning, he said, I, you will want to. Do you understand? You will want to please God. He will put his spirit in you and you will want to. And that is revival. It's not praying in tongues. No. Revival is wanting to set people on fire for God. Wanting them to catch, not just wanting them to come and watch you burn, but wanting them to catch that same fire so that we're burning all over the place. If every woman in this room walks away from here determined to serve God, determined to live right, we will take over this nation. What the obedience of one can do. <laughs> so avoid all of the secret sins. Avoid all of the secret sins. So the first thing is consecration. The second thing is boldness. If you're going to be revived, if you're going to live a revival, it's boldness. Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Listen, I shared with you guys how, okay, so for those who joined 3 p.m. prayer, I, I shared with you guys how the important thing is the word. So Satan comes with persecution for the sake of the word, not for you, you are too small. It's for the sake of the word because he knows that the word has the power to produce 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. The word of God, if you sow it, it has the power to produce in your health, to produce in your marriage, to produce babies. Someone came to me this morning and showed me a picture of her, two miracle babies from Hannah's heart. Listen, the obedience of one. Hey, I'm coming. I'm coming. I don't want to get ahead of myself, I'm coming. We must make up our minds not to be ashamed of the gospel. You know why? Because these days, People celebrate wrong. Even you that are doing right, you will not be ashamed. You will not, you know, you know, I have a lot more people ashamed to publicly declare that they are virgins. Because people will think that they are, okay, you are a dry girl. Can you say you are a virgin at this age? If you are not married, you should be a virgin. You should. If it didn't happen, well, you know, that's not, nobody, nobody's judging you or anything. I'm just saying that you should. So you shouldn't be ashamed of saying it if you are. I have a lot of people these days pretending. When you see them, they will dress, they will do it. One single boy never kiss here. Yeah, never kiss here. 
but it's not, not cool to say it. And we must change that. Tell your neighbor we must change that. So you must be bold. And listen, persecution will come because of it. I woke up, a, I woke up um, one morning a few weeks ago. Is it a few weeks ago? A few months ago? I don't even remember now because all those things don't bother me. And I had done a series of, so that month, the month before or something, I had done a series of meetings, you know. And every time they invite Pastor Kia and they invite me, it's always relationship, which isn't really my first call, but I mean, Lord, whatever you want to use me for, wherever you want to plant me, I'm, I've sold my life. So, I'd preached a few messages, and they had asked me to address radical feminism in marriage. And I preached the word of God. And that's all I did. I didn't have, I didn't even have an opinion because the word of God has made that opinion for me. I didn't even bother saying, no, this is what I think is not that. I just declared the word. This is what the Bible says. If you are going to be married, then you submit, you love. That's all. So that morning, I woke up and Gideon sent me a message. Hmm. Gideon, do you have that slide? Are you ready? Feminism in marriage, legit block. Feminism in marriage is rubbish. Nigerian female pastor declares. Video causes massive reaction. Next one. Feminism in marriage is rubbish. Feminism in marriage is not God's word, Pastor Mildred. Next one. If you're in, oh. According to my, the, 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 should women should be obedient to God? Feminism, everywhere. People are saying sending messages. And I was wondering what's going on. Then the comments started. She's a fool. She should shut her mouth. If you don't know anything, don't attack what you don't know. Well, da, 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 went on. And the Bible says we should submit to one to another. Why is the only women you for attacking? Well, da, 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 da. One, one little child who wanted to become popular decided he will use me, put it up there, and start talking about, I have a problem when women talk about these things, blah, 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 blah. So people that have time, because tribe members are everywhere. People that have time now went and started answering him. Mm -hmm. Now started answering him that... There's a balance to this message. Put up the one for the men. It will block them. It will delete. It will block them. It will delete. And I was laughing. You know why? Because I'm constantly in flint mode. Ay, yeah, yeah. If you know me, I am the definition of hashtag flint mode. I have set my face like a flint. I will not be moved. If this is what God's word says, this is what I'm going to say. If this is what God stands for, this is what I'm going to stand for. Enough of cowering from social media just because people are talking. Let me tell you, I would rather be wrong with men and be right with God than be wrong with God to be right with men. Let me tell you, you have to be careful. I know they say we must be politically correct, but must it be at the expense of being spiritually wrong? I am not moved. When they put these things up, people were calling me, hope you're okay, hope you're okay. I say, how much is Panadol? Why are you drinking Panadol for another person's headache? Me, am I okay? I'm very okay. I'm so okay. The worst that can happen is they will leave social media for me. But that I will not preach the gospel or that I will be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus that saved me. When they die for me, then we can have a conversation. But as far as I know, the only person who laid down his life for me is Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep shouting. I'm going to keep preaching till the day he returns. Ah, Amy. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not. When it comes to those kind of things, I didn't dare. Oh no. Let me say it again. I did not dare. Hmm. If you are going to live a revived life, you must be bold. If you are going to sustain revival, you must be bold. I was taking prayer walk one morning in my estate. JJ on my own. That day, Mr. God said she went to school, so she, she abandoned me. Only me, I was going my own. I was talking small, small. Low. One man was looking at me. He was looking at me funny, like, almost like, I can't read his mind, though, but you see, human beings were judgmental, so I don't judge him. So I was looking at him, the way he was looking at me, I was looking at him. I felt like he was thinking, ah, this fine girl, she don't decrease. <laughs> and then he occurred to me, 
Because when Emily looked at me like that, I, I wanted to, I, I toned it down a bit. I just went and smiled. I wanted to pass by, you know. And they do this, there are a couple of them, they do this round, so you will meet them again when they're coming back. So I, I kind of told it down the first time. I said, really? Is that what we're doing now? I said, what? He said, so we're now ashamed, Abby. You're ashamed of me. If that guy was smoking, do you think he would put it out when you're passing? <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Did he not trigger something in my kidney? Yabatosata. Hey, are there revived ladies in the house? Yakabo Shata Yale. I said it did trigger something in my kidney. Yeah. So when the guy passed again, he was looking at me with that sympathetic, uh, yeah, fine girl like this. <laughs> so when he looked at me, I said, Mam Bradodosh. Lekatosa Kayele Bosha. Libra Tosa. I said, No. I turned. I followed him. Makabo Shata. Lekere Bosa. Let's do this. He said, if you are ashamed of me in front of people, hey, when it really matters, in front of my father, I will be ashamed of you. And let me tell you, don't want him to dodge you that day. Oh. You will become, he said, Jesus, he said, man, I don't know you. Oh. Stand well. <laughs> you don't want that to be your story. Boldness. If you are going to be revived, yes, you can live a life of holiness. But you know some people live it secretly. Mm, you must be bold. You must be like Daniel and his friends. I say, oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We know the God that we serve. He's able to deliver us. But let's just say that for any reason, it no feel like we will still not bow. That's true revival. Boldness. Boldness. Use your full chest and serve Jesus. Full chest. Don't carry your Bible and cover it. And then they'll say, what are you looking at? You're reading you version. You say, no, 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 no. I was just looking at Netflix. And see, bring out your you version. In fact, why you carry you version? Carry the Bible. Carry it to the office and put it on your table. So when they are looking for people to help them sign false documents, they won't come to you. Ah, he said, I don't know. In this office, all the guys are toasting me. They say, Where your body language is? There's an aura you are giving off. My husband said it one day to me, and it blew my mind. He said, Men don't treat all women the same. There's a way you will look at me, you will know how to set your mouth before you tell me, um, I want to take you out for. I will keep it with you guys. At some point in my life, I backslid. I call it my wilderness years. I lived in Port Harcourt that one year. I dated an unbeliever. What ended our relationship was I opened his bag and I saw wedding ivy. Yeah, story, last long story, less. So after the marriage, he now came and called me one day, called me on the phone. Um, the man in the office wanted to drop by. I say, why? Wait till you lost weight, fine. He say, um, no, he just wanted to talk to me about something. I didn't answer him. I got to the office. My boss called me. Oh, we have somebody in the office who says he has to see you. I say, me. In the office. I don't take guests in the office. He said, no, that this person is downstairs. I came downstairs. I saw him. I said, wait till you define. Because then I said, no, in fact, I didn't tell him what you define. I said, what are you looking for? Because it's Mildred. He's called me Mildred. So I say, what are you looking for? He said, oh, his marriage is a mistake. I say, okay. So how do I come in? Because I don't talk to married men. I don't, see, I don't talk to married men, no. Do you understand? It's, it, it, I want you to understand what I'm saying. It's not, you know, because a lot of you, 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 you romance sin. Do you understand? The married one is sitting you down, telling you how his wife is making him unhappy. The challenges he's facing with her, and blah, 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 and things like that. And you, counselor general. You don't know that Satan wants to destroy your destiny. She no good, she no good, she did in her 25 years. You, solution provider. I think there's something he wants that she's not giving him. Thank you, give her. So he came up and said, what do you want? He said, he said um, that he needs to clear his head. And so he was wondering um, if we could go somewhere together. 
I said, let me, let me escort you to your car. Because you know this is a workplace. And there's a certain behavior. There's a way you must conduct yourself in the office. So I said, let me walk you to your car as we reach Imoto. I said, I said, look me. He looked at me. I said, yes, this is this your man on Mildred. Look at me. I said, you see, eh? The God that I serve, I'm not too serving well this year, but the God that I serve, it will help me to punish you. <laughs> and yes, so I'm a pastor, so really I shouldn't tell you these things, but somebody needs to hear this. I said, the God I serve, it will help me to punish you. The guy looked at me. I said, because I didn't follow you, they speak English since. You know, no, sir, no, well. <laughs> I'm not good to marry. I go to let's go somewhere. God will help me to punish you. And per eventually you want to repent. You will collect the punishment before you repent. I was that mad. And that's intentional. See, let me tell you. There are some things you have to face head on. I don't know how he will take it if I tell him to get lost. Let's try. Tell him to get lost. Let's see how he takes it. You've made a mistake. Must you stay in that mistake? That's why I'm shouting. I know I'm telling you. If I say, don't, don't, don't marry an unbe unbeliever. They never think about anybody but themselves. You don't go marry. You they come back and you, let's just go and say, I want to talk, I want to clear my head. Now me go to clear head. But you keep wife for house. If you allow them to treat you anyhow, they will useless your life and your destiny. So you must carry yourself with a certain level of dignity. You are going to be sustain this revival. You have to let them know that the person you I was before is not the same person I am today. After that woman sinned, my time is up. After that woman sinned, look at the way I ever look back like which kind of time. Make una no try him. <laughs> but you will need to go home now. We don't want to. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, wait. Let me see what I want to say. <laughs> Let me see what I want to say. We still have panel. Don't worry. I'll answer your questions on panel. I don't forget when they talk. <laughs> huh? Yes, after that woman that was caught in adultery was brought to Jesus. Jesus said something. When he asked her, he said, does anybody condemn you? She said, nobody. He said, neither do I. However, go and sin no more. From as you are living here, don't go back to the person you were caught together in adultery with. Even though I don't know how he was, she was caught in adultery and we did not see the person. I thought they said it was in the act. Is there another act of adultery that requires only one person? She was caught in the act of adultery. And Jesus told her, I forgive you all, but don't go and do it again. The problem is not the sin. It is that mindset that it's okay. She be caught that Jesus will forgive me. That's the problem. If you know that sin has the power to destroy your soul, you won't do it again. Whether you sin or you don't sin, it doesn't affect Jesus. You know that. Oh. It doesn't affect him in any way. He will still be God. You cannot disgod him, in God him, on God him, de God him, a God him, on de God him. You can't. Your sin is not enough. What it does is it separates you from God. It destroys your testimony. Now, some of the mistakes I may have made in my past, I can use it positively now because God, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back there. But to leave this place and go back and continue life as usual, no. Jesus offered grace and truth. That's the balance of that message. It's a grace and truth message. Even the guy that was at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, when Jesus healed him, when he came back to say, Jesus said, they know anything to you. He said, no. Jesus said, go. Don't sin again. Let something worse. People don't preach that part of the message. Jesus said, let something worse happens to you. Don't do it again. Break up with that married man for your destiny. Money is not everything. Money is not everything. How much is he giving you? Is it able to save your soul? How much will the price of soul? How much did the soul? Who, who price soul last? How much? That boy makes you feel good. Listen, did you not feel good in worship this morning? Hey! 
no lover like Jesus. No lover like Jesus. How much? Money is not everything. Don't wreck that woman's home. I pity those of you. See, I, have, I know some people today, they are praying for children. We are praying now. Because you don't go jam one praying woman somewhere. And let me tell you, God fights correctly. You can't be playing with Jehovah Sabaoth. You don't know him. Leave where. Don't give us prayer points. Me and Okuku follow. I will send you to Amazi and Vera. Vera likes to pray. So how are you? Oh, sorry. So is it, there is therefore now no condemnation. Why must we live in sin? Why will we be fighting condemnation? Why? You are getting away with it now. One day, you will jam one woman. A praying woman, you will never live to tell the story. I know many girls who their lives are destroyed today. I can't even remember. I was telling me the story of somebody that something happened to, and then the girl was sick. Her mother went to beg the friend. What did this girl do? This sickness is not normal. That's how they started confessing, confession, confessing, confession. It's one woman's husband, and the woman they pray. The girl's mother had to go and beg the woman that, please. The woman said, no. No. I didn't, I didn't cause her. I see that's the worst type. Ah, uh, you don't know that's the worst type? Where you say, Lord, fight for me. I hold my peace. Can you battle with the Lord and win? You can fight me and win, but you cannot battle with the Lord and win. So the most dangerous type is when somebody stands back and say, you know what? Lord, fight for me. I'm shouting it now. I'm shouting it now. I'm shouting now. My voice don't nearly go. I'm shouting now. Leave that man alone. I don't know who that is. It's not in my notes. Come and check my notes. All these things I'm saying, they're not in my notes. Somebody's pulling it out of me. Stop it. Stop it. It's not worth it. God can give you your own. God can give you your own. And you see the problem with sin? When you sleep with somebody's husband, you can never sleep again in your life because you will believe your own husband when you do get married. If you do get married, that he's doing the same thing. Stop it. This revival is real. Stop being jealous. Stop throwing people down. You can't build something, but you are destroying it with your mouth. What did she even do, Seth? Is it that her book? What is it, Mrs. Club? What did she even write, Seth? And she has brought out aristocrats' wife. What was it? The first one knows it. Why she write a second one? But you, you have not even written. You've not even written uh, notes in class. Wait now. When I write my own, oh, she will bow. I will even invite her to the launching. Is it not a canon? What did she write? You can't do anything when you pull other people down. You are too busy destroying. You don't have time to build. Let me end with this. Even me, save the time, no. I don't understand how it is doing. It's the prayer they prayed on this altar. Those girls that prayed are dangerous. So how does God, what does God want us to do when we're revived? I want to read you a scripture. Ezra 9.9. 9. So this was the scripture God gave me when he told me um, we're going to do revived. Because when, it's, when I first heard it, I thought it was revived. And he said to me, no, the theme for the conference is revived. Ezra 9.9 9 says, for we were slaves, but in his unfailing love, our God did not abandon us in our slavery. We were slaves to sin. Everyone, I don't think there's anybody in this room that can boldly tell me that they've not sinned before. Or that they don't have something that they fought against. Something that tried to hinder them. Something that tried to hold them down. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's anger. I was a slave to anger. I've just said to you before, I used to go and fight in the market. DJ is here. My younger sister is here. I will go. My tail, are you not tailors? Ah. Tailors don't want you to make heaven. I gave tailor my clothes. I was going back to school. I went back to school. Came back. How, how, how long is it? It's three months old. That's three months. A semester is three months. I came back. Uncle, wear my clothes. I will never forget his name, Yemi. 
Hear me wear my clothes. He say, uh, that they are just putting zip. I say, okay. Me and DJ now sat down inside the shop, in Ted Joshua Market. We sat down in the shop. And please note, I was raised an Ajebota. I went to Corona. So I need you to understand that I was raised at Jabota. So all this my thoughts behavior is Satan. <laughs> just, I just, I'm just putting it out there. So we sat down in this shop waiting for this guy. 10 minutes ago, come, you know, come. 20 minutes ago, come, you know, come. 30 minutes. Ah. So at some point, after we had waited for a long time, he thought we would have gone. So he just bounced, come back. Ah, I see, I'm wearing my clothes. He say, ah, I say, yeah, me wear my clothes. I first blocked the entrance to the shop. Yeah, me wear my clothes. He say, okay, wait. Wait, wait, auntie, wait. I won't go bring him. He just, he wanted to, he just, I think he wanted to pick scissors or something. I can't remember. He wanted to do something. I just saw my fabric. I just pulled it out. They never even draw chalk. <laughs> do you understand? He has not drawn chalk. Talk less of cutting it. Talk less of putting zip. I say, yeah, me and my clothes with this. Yeah, me and my clothes be this. Twa, twa. Dragged him out of the shop, padlocked the shop, put the key in my pocket and left. <laughs> Anger. As I was going, some old women that sell on their way under that Ted Joshua Bridge. Say, hey, now ain't good for him. Now so all this tailor they do. My dear, well done. My man I say, now so now they do. If now you're picking gun fights for market, you go green. <laughs> I went with the key. Another tailor, Dan, what's that guy's name? Dan something. That he says a Ghanaian tailor, he sews very well. He sews very well. Just opposite Ted Joshua Market on the other side. He's not in the market, so he's not like the others. Cock up, plenty, plenty money. Dan, Dan, we, Dan, I don't know, Dan something. One kind of name. Every day I go, the guy no good day. He don't collect money. The most money I've ever paid tailor in my life. That time, one kind of crazy money, collected this money. Every day you go, they say it's not around. So I went, they say it's not around. So I came out, went to do something. I showed the guy, I thought I had entered boss or something. I just turned lights and saw him. In my bid <laughs> to go and give him power driver, I did not see gutter in front of me. <laughs> Lo and behold, as I ran towards the man, I landed in the gutter. It's the man that used pure water to come and wash my body for me. <laughs> and the most famous one, where I almost killed somebody because of malt, is on YouTube. I'm telling you, everybody has struggled with something. My own may not be fornication, anger. My own may not be adultery, jealousy, unforgiveness. There's something. So it says we were slaves, but in his unfailing love, our God did not abandon us in our slavery. Instead, he caused the kings of Persia to treat us favorably. See what he did. He says, he revived us so that we could build Yekalu Shatta. Your revival is not for you to make noise in your neighborhood. It's not for you to wake everybody in the middle of the night. Maka, yala, bo, bo, bo. Mm -mm. Your revival is to build. He says you are revived so we could build the temple of our God and repair its ruins. How many of you know that these days, and I thank God, that's why I say you preached my message yesterday. Pastor Jela said God is building his church. Is he going to come down physically and build it? I can't hear you ladies. He's going to use you to build it. So the revival and you're being revived is for the work ahead to build his temple. That's why I cannot for the life of me understand people who want to make money from God. You learn a skill in church and they tell you to come and do it. Then you now give one kind of money. That fear, fear, even me. Something is 10,000 naira, you say it's 150,000 naira because you want to eat God's money and you sleep at night. Wow. If you were to cost the air that he's giving you free, will you stand? What's the price of mercy? Come and design something for church. Um, actually, I, char I charge 20,000 outside, but because it's church, I'll do 18,500. So where is your own service to God? You are using that skill in the workplace, but you can't use it for God. I've told you my life scripture. See, it says you will serve the Lord your God with your passion, your prayers, and your intelligence. 
I remember 2018, I was almost losing my mind. And I remember the person I called was Amaze. I told Amaze, Amaze, I can't lose my mind because I use it to serve God. I said, Amaze, I was crying. I said, Amaze, I can't think. My mind, I'm losing my mind. I can't lose my mind because I use it to serve God. So people are panicked. If I, if my, my office, I'll lose my job. I don't care about the job. My only passion. I have my, I'm resolute in my chasing after God. That's all that matters. Only one thing is needful. One. I'm not worried about losing my mind because of creativity. That's why I broke down when he was singing. Because he makes the little things I do be like saying a big thing. Small thing where I go do when God go push on me here. He go be like saying, wait, sin, I do this, God. Small thing. Obedience of one is what has brought you people in this room today. That God says, I want to use you. I threw away my, I don't really send women, I beg. That's all of us be reading our Bible. I threw it away and I said, Lord, if that's what you need me to do, I will do it. The people that I know that have struggled with women ministry the most in my life is Amaka. Amaka came in 2010. And since that time, she has been standing by me. The two of us know like women ministry. When, when I just come and say, she will say, but simply then read Bible. And that's how I am too. Because that's what brought me out. Reading the word. So why do I need to be chasing people? I got to a stage in Shalom, was doing Shalom, and I said, God, this year what I'm trusting you for is a love for women like never before. And I don't know how many people remember that year. I stood on this stage and I said, all of a sudden, I feel like I want to hug every single one of you. I fell in love with what I was called to do. So you may not like it, but do it first. You may not like the assignment, you may not like to carry cement, but if that's what is required, put it on your head and use your full chest and bounce about. We are building. It's not about you. It will never be about you. First, ask God, what have you revived me for? What assignment is mine? What assignment is mine? Do I always have my life together? No. Do I always feel energetic? No. But I keep moving. I keep moving. I keep moving. I can't count how many times in the last 13 or 14 years we've been doing this that Satan has tried to take me out. I can't count. Whether through people or things or my health. There was one day I went, who was the person that took me? I think it was the person that took me to first gate. Was it you? I went there for something else. When they checked my blood pressure, the nurse there said, hope she's not driving. Take her home. Take her as you are looking. Take, she can have a stroke. If I tell you the readings, you won't believe it. We keep building, guys. It's not about how we feel. Revival will not always be comfortable. There are things he will ask you to drop. I want you, I want more. Before you can have more, there has to be space for the more. You want more of God, then you can't be full of yourself. I want more. I want more, Jesus. It's not singing. It's a life of discipline. Some days he will tell you, 12 midnight, I want you praying. And I don't want you to pray for yourself. And you are just there saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. For two hours. And in those two hours, you may not even feel, in quotes, the presence of God. But he wants to see that you are there faithfully doing what he said you should do. So I'm calling you today to a life of obedience. I'm calling you to a life of revival. I'm calling you to a life of discipline. To be a disciple, you have to be disciplined. Jesus has laid a pattern down. Can you follow it? So this morning, we're going to make up our minds. We're going to pray for a bit, just one minute. We're going to pray. And then... I'm going to um, challenge you to, to do something that is dear to my heart this year, and I hope you will do it with me. I believe that God is doing something in these times. I yesterday, you also stole my message. I'm, I'm, de- I'm going to do it together. <laughs> so, I had this whole revelation about this being salt and light. And the pastor just said it casually, like it wasn't a deep revelation. She just said, oh, by the way, it's in the scripture or something, something. 
I say, see Revelation, why they hide with my full chest? Say, if I come here, I will scatter it. Huh? She just said it in passing yesterday. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm really offended, but it's okay. <clears throat> so when I saw this, I saw a picture of this, and Femi, please, can you hear me? I, I, I'm sure he's not in the room, but his wife is here, so she collect the celebration on Nabia. Please, can you hear me celebrate designs by Femi? When I told him, when I told him the vision I saw, that God showed me fire coming out of water, and that the water wasn't drying up and the fire wasn't quenching. That God was telling me that he was going to set our hearts on fire and at the same time, that he was going to um, cause us to be revived by the living water. I, showed, I said that thing to him and I didn't know how he was going to bring it to life, but he tried a couple of times and then eventually got this. And I knew that we had to put it on the t-shirt. I knew, I knew. So I want to read a scripture to you. Um, I hope I find it. TPT, Psalm 45. Psalm 45, verse 1, TPT. Let me see if that's it. There's a scripture that dropped in my heart this morning. Do you have it? Hmm, I thought I wrote it down. Very unlikely. Is it there? Yeah, that's it. So I saw the scripture was two days ago. And it kind of covered everything. And that's the prayer we're going to pray this morning. It says, my heart is on fire. How many women want their hearts to burn for Jesus? <laughs> and you see the thing about fire. Like DJ said when she was praying. I think it was the day she was praying or someone else, I'm not sure. Said fire doesn't take permission. When fire wants to ravage, it will burn. Once you light fire somewhere, it will burn everything around it. So if the fire of God is burning, unforgiveness will burn up. Jealousy will burn up. That desire to do bad will burn up. He says, my heart is on fire, burning over with passion, bubbling up within me at these beautiful lyrics as a lovely poem to be sung for the king. And he says, like a river bursting its banks, I'm overflowing with words, spilling out into this sacred story. Now, God showed me that it's possible for there to be fire and water in the same heart and the same life in this scripture. And it says, it is for the king. It's not for anyone else. Look at it. It's for the king. As we're going to pray this morning, that I will burn for you, Jesus. And yet I will be refreshed by the living water that will flow in me because I will not thirst again. I will not thirst for the things I don't need. I will not thirst for position. I will not thirst for power. I will not thirst for anything but you. I will be better because of you. I will be healed because of you. I will come to life because of you. I will be restored because of you. I will be awakened because of you. Because of you, I will be revived. If that is your prayer this morning, then jump to your feet. Let's pray. Oh, I'm way past time. Way, way past time. So I want us to just pray this prayer. Stretch your hands to heaven. Let me tell you what you need is the fire of God. You can't do this on your own. It can't be ordinary anymore. It can't be business as usual. I know you've done great things for God, but there's so much more in God. There's so much more in God. You can't exhaust Him. Say, Lord, I want more. 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 La daya kali shata. Empty me of self. Rakada da daya bado shata. I don't want to desire evil anymore. Ah, rakada ye de 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 de. La bado shata ya legedista. Rikamando do shata. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now I want to pray for two sets of people. I want to pray for you, first of all, if you've never given your heart to Christ. I'm not even going to call you out, not because I, I, I feel it's embarrassing, no, because everyone who doesn't come out, hopefully has done this at some point in their lives. So I want us to, I want us to pray. If you are here, you've never given your life to Christ, where you are sitting, I want you to raise your right hand, and I'm just going to pray with you quickly. I want to do this so that you will be a part and be connected to us, be connected to the King, become a child of God. That's where your identity is. That's where you know you are covered. So I want to pray that prayer with you quickly before I make the call. 
There are two calls God asked me to make this morning, and I want to make that call this morning. Lekado Shata, is there anybody here? If you are here, let me see your hand so I'll know who I'm praying with. And if there's nobody, let me move on to the next thing. Is there anybody in the room? Is there anybody in the room? Wow, so we're all saved. Hallelujah. We're all saved. So you're sure that if you die now, you're going to heaven. Hallelujah. And you will not go to heaven ashamed. You will enter boldly. They won't be asking you, who are you? Who are you looking for? Did you miss road? Hallelujah. Praise God. Second call. Um, possibly we may need to bow our heads and close our eyes. Just because I don't want to embarrass these people. But listen to me. Be like Jairus. Uh, be like Jairus. He was a Jew, and at the time, Jews were staying away from Jesus. He was a leader. And he knew he had a need, and he came to Jesus. He didn't say, oh, I'm a big boy. I'm a ruler of the temple. I don't want people to look at me. Today, God wants to heal you. So I'm going to make this call, and if you need to be prayed for, quickly come out. Let me pray for you so we can move on to the next thing. Um, so if you're in this house, and in 2020, between 2020 and now, some major tragedies have happened in your life. Some things that they caught you so deep and you didn't know you could survive. So I don't know whether it's a bad marriage. I don't know whether it's a miscarriage. I don't know whether you lost your job. I don't know. Something that made you question the love of God for you. Something that made you question whether God really loves you. You're going through financial challenge. Whatever it is, and you know that you need to be prayed for this morning. If you are that person, please quickly come forward. I want to pray with you. This is about you. Forget everyone else that is in the room. This is about you. Something that has made you question God and say, I can't believe you were watching me and this happened. I can't believe you were watching me and this happened. And you've done everything you know to do, but it just hurts so badly. It just hurts so badly. Chisom. today and say, God, I'm still here. I'm still here, Jesus. I'm still here. I'm still here. I think you should have answered me by now, but you know best. I think you shouldn't have let that happen to me, but you know best. I feel betrayed, but you know best. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. It's a sign of surrender. It's you asking God to carry you. Lift those hands to heaven. Let's do this quickly. We need to leave here now. Oh, he wants to hear your voice. Cry out to him this morning. 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 I didn't see Amaka. Cry out to him this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you see your daughters this morning, and I know you feel their pain. If there's someone beside you that is really broken and is crying, please help me be the hand of God to them, and just hold them, even in your own pain. He that waters shall be watered, even in your own pain. If you strengthen someone else, you'll be strengthened. The liberal soul shall be made fat. You feel betrayed. There's so much pain this morning. You feel like God shouldn't have let it happen. And online, wherever you are, if that is you, God wants to reach you where you are. How could he let you lose your babies? You waited so long. How could your husband walk out on you after everything you did for him? After everything you gave him? How could your child die after all the money you borrowed for the treatment? How could you fail? You are not that person. You did everything. You exercised. You ate right. Why did you miscarry? Why did you get fired? 
you've sown and sown and sown and yet you are struggling with your finances and God is saying I'm here I have not changed I am still the God who loves you Father we ask that your love will reach everyone wherever they are in the name of Jesus all over this room, all over the nations, all over the world, wherever they are, that your love will begin to heal, begin to restore, begin to repair. And even in the going through, even if you don't get all out of it right now, in the going through, Lord, I release strength to your daughters, strength to your daughters, strength to your daughters. Lord, I pray for a healing in their hearts, a healing in their hearts, a healing in their hearts, so that they can love you more. Let the love of God that is shed in their hearts, let it be strengthened. Let there be recovery. Let there be recovery. In Jesus' name. Ladies, look at me. Look at me. Listen. His word says that at least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again. He says, and its new shoots will not fail. That means that you will recover. He says, its roots may grow old in the ground and its stump die in the soil. Yet, this is the turning point. It says, yet, at the scent of water, it will bud and it will put forth its shoots. Listen, there's water in this room. And because of that, I declare revival in your heart in the name of Jesus. You will fall, and fall in love afresh with Jesus all over again. Every pain that is in your heart will be healed in the name of Jesus. All the questions in your heart will be answered in the name of Jesus. I declare strength. Listen, God said some of you may not come out of it. However, he will give you strength to go through it. He said there's a strength for going through. And when you come out on the other side, because you will come out on the other side. When you come out on the other side, you will come out stronger and you will be able to strengthen your brethren. There was a time in my life I was this person. I really felt like God didn't love me. I was serving, I was sowing, I was doing everything I needed to do. And yet, I could not carry a child. Not that I was getting pregnant, I could not even get pregnant. And I kept saying, God, and you're making me do this in the public eye. People were mocking, people were insulting, people were doing all kinds of things. But when God did it, now, it's not even me celebrating my babies. It's celebrating the many Hannah's heart moms that we have today. A ministry has been born out of it. I don't know what you're going through, but let me tell you. If you allow God to take you by the hand and lead you out of it, what he will bring out of it will blow your mind. So you're crying. But the Bible says, weeping may endure for the night. But listen to me, your joy has come. Let me hear your loudest amen and celebrate God as you go back to your seat dry your eyes God has not changed He does not fail celebrate, celebrate, celebrate my heart is on fire for you the second call I need to make and I'm not going to have you come out I want you to where you are in your seat raise your hand if you are that person just wait I'm going to say what that is. I carry a grace for boldness. God told me that I carry a grace for boldness when it comes to the things of God. I am not ashamed. I'm not afraid. But after you go kill me, that's the worst that can happen. But I find that a lot of people cower when it comes to the things of God. If somebody just is sudden, hey, why did I say that? Why did you say what? We will say it again and louder. So if you need that boldness, because we need it in these end times, I want to release that grace. I need to raise your hand. If you say, I believe that I need this boldness to stand for Jesus, even when the whole world says no, I want to stand for Jesus. I want to be bold about the things that I believe. I want to be bold in my convictions. I want to be bold in my convictions. 
it's okay. Listen, let me tell you something. With those hands, yeah, why you put the hand up? Because your eyes need down. I'm joking. One of the things I found out about God is that if you allow him, he will take over your life. And he makes it better. You know how people always tell you that uh, you cannot have female friends, women are somehow, all those kind of things. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Some of my greatest relationships today are girls. If you are not a bad person, why do you think other people are bad? To the pure, all things are pure. To the righteous, all things are righteous. To the holy, all things are holy. To the good, all things are good. So you see me, I use my full chest to do love. For. I love deeply. If you by any chance enter my trap of love, you can never recover. Ah, you can't recover. There are people, I told them yesterday, this one's I've entered my trap. They're not there yesterday. You can't offend me. Ask them. There are some people here, they know themselves. You can't offend me. It's too late. It's too late. I'm trusting God for women like that who will live the gospel. It's not just about shouting. When I say boldness, it's not just about shouting. They'll say, I'm preaching the gospel. No. Preach with your life. If God says love, then love. I love with everything I am and I have. If you are my person, you will never feel abandoned. I tell you because that is what I've seen about God. J. Clare said it that even if everybody goes, every man fails you, God remains. Ah, And that's what I'm telling you this morning. We must be that hand of God. God is not going to come down. Somebody needs a hug. You are praying for them. Be hugged in Jesus' name. Be hugged in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, hug her, hug her, hug her. Let the Holy Spirit wrap your hand. Meanwhile, God is that wondering, what, what's in this one they talk now? What's in they talk? What's in that two hands? That, these two things, what's it be? He says hand for what? For lifting up. My friend, wrap, wrap hand around your sister and stop making noise in heaven. I'm talking about boldness in living like Christ. Loving people. Serving. Be bold in your service. I'm not ashamed to say that I serve. I serve my husband. I serve my church. I serve in just those girls. I'm not ashamed. How can a man tell you what to do? <laughs> Some of the ladies I pray with, I told them before, now when my husband tells me, follow your heart. I tell them I don't have heart, sir. You are cuckoo the earth, so tell me the you thing know. Some people are living in healthy relationships. I can't do this because my husband loves me. But you are ashamed. You are ashamed to tell me so that people will not think you are weak. Uh, how, can you, how can you do that? You don't know feminism is raining. Will you be bold in living your convictions? That's what I want to release to you today. Boldness. Boldness to parent your children right. To tell your children no. My son throws tantrums sometimes. He said, I said, why, why are you doing that, David? He said, because I'm angry. I said, uh -huh. be angry, good. But in your anger, do not sin. He knows that standard. What's wrong with being angry? Even Jesus was angry. He said, okay. But in your anger, do not sin. Uh, children, they're too young to know. The, they're too young to, to crown King James. Have you heard them singing secular songs? I came downstairs one day, who was with me that day? I saw David rapping and something, something, something. I said, go, 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 what are you doing? He said, I'm rapping. I said, you are rapping this whole song. He said, yes. I said, you are finished. If you don't read, learn romance from beginning to end, they were laughing. Be bold in raising your children. Be bold in teaching them that it's okay to love God. It's okay not to be ashamed. Be bold. That's the boldness I'm releasing, not the boldness to come and hold mic. I've, shared in many, I've told you many times, you may never have access to this pulpit, but your pulpit is anywhere you get the opportunity to pull people out of a pit. So you are going to take that boldness to your office. Don't be a Christian in church. You're going to take that boldness into your marriage. Don't be a Christian in church. When I say I'm not ashamed of the gospel, I mean I'm not ashamed to live for Jesus. And that's the boldness I want to release to you this morning. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ladies, are you sure? I need your hands up. Hands up. Hearts lifted to heaven, hands up. I need your hands up this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus. 
I release the grace for boldness on your daughters this morning. The grace to live for the gospel. The grace to be a voice of change in this generation. The voice, the voice of change in this generation. The voice of godliness in this generation. Father, I thank you. Because even at this time, a fire has been set in our hearts this morning. Thank you for the living water. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you believe you received it, come on, celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God.